Vast Company is a business magazine that focuses on business, business development, and general entrepreneurship. On April 9th, they publish an in-depth interview with J.J. Abrams, founder of production company Bad Robot, on how he went about creating and growing the company, and its future expansions into other business venues. In this interview, J.J. Abrams also dropped some nuggets of information pertaining to his Star Wars directing duties, and the business decisions behind that. For the core readership of Fast Company, this was but some random trivia in the Bad Robot success story. For fans of genre media in general, and of Star Wars in particular, this random trivia was bombshells hitting with nuclear force, which is why this interview got the attention it did in the genre media, just in time for Star Wars celebration. In this editorial, I will go through what Abram said, what it implies about how Lucasfilm has been run on Kathleen Kennedy's watch, and finally, which lessons I think the industry at large should take from this. Fast Company asked Abrams how it felt when he was suddenly brought in to direct Episode 9 after Colin Trevorrow departed while the movie was still in development. In his lengthy reply, Abrams said, among other things, that when Kathleen Kennedy first approached him about taking over Episode 9, he was hesitant. It was his wife that convinced him to go for it, despite the time constraints. Fast Company then inquired more about the time constraints, to which Abrams replied that they begin with the announced release date, and then everything works backwards from there. Then he said, and I quote, To have no script, and to have a release date, and have it be essentially a two-year window when you're saying to yourself, you've got two years from the decision to do it to release, and you have literally nothing. You don't have a story, you don't have the cast, you don't have the designers, the sets. There was a crew, and there were things that will be worked on for the version that preceded ours, but this was starting over. In other words, just like what happened with Justin Lin on Star Trek Beyond, Abrams came in at the very last moment, after the original incarnation of the movie had fallen apart, and had to start over completely and utterly from scratch. For a Star Wars fan, that should be disturbing, as it implies there was no grand plan for the trilogy as a whole. But Abrams added even further weight to this implication, when he addressed the challenge of picking up where Ryan Johnson left off. His exact words were, It was a completely unknown scenario. I had some gut instincts about where the story would have gone. But without getting in the weeds on episode 8, that was a story that Ryan wrote and was telling based on Seven before we met. So he was taking the thing in another direction. So we also had to respond to episode 8. So our movie was not just following what we had started, it was following what we had started and then had been advanced by someone else. First of all, do note that Abrams is being diplomatic here. He doesn't say anything bad about Ryan Johnson, but he also doesn't say a single positive thing about him, or about The Last Jedi. Within this context, that can only be construed as bad. Because the context here is the challenge facing Abrams of continuing the story he himself started, after Ryan Johnson took it in a completely different direction. Many have run away with the narrative that there never was a plan. That is the implication of this interview in isolation, but that does not correspond entirely to what we've heard previously. One year ago, Daisy Ridley told French publication Geek de Mag that she was under the impression that Abrams had written outlines for both episodes 8 and 9, and that there was some consensus for the overall direction of the trilogy, although each director was free to put their own spin on their movies. But then Ryan Johnson more or less went his own way and threw whatever plan there had been out the window. I'm paraphrasing, of course, but that was the general message. Shortly afterwards, Simon Pegg said pretty much the same thing, adding that J.J. Abrams had much bigger plans for the reveal of race parentage, which were then undone by The Last Jedi. So no matter how diplomatic Abrams tried to be here, if we add the nuance of past statements from others, it would appear that there indeed was a plan when he made Episode 7. But then Ryan Johnson came. With Kathleen Kennedy's blessing, he threw the plan out, and after that, there was no plan anymore. The Star Wars franchise is in some sense a cinematic universe, in that it is a larger saga told over the course of several installments. It wasn't always that way. When George Lucas made his original Star Wars, there were no trilogy plans. 
Darth Vader wasn't even Luke's father. That all came later, when Empire and Return were mapped out after the original Star Wars was a certified smash hit in need of sequels. Today, though, there can be no doubt that Star Wars is a cinematic universe, and it must be approached like one, meaning it must be approached and run in much the same way as a TV series. Each episode must tell its own story, but also fit in with the rest of the series and further the overall narrative of the season and even across seasons. Meaning, it must be controlled by a showrunner, by a Kevin Feige, which I vote should be made the official title for Cinematic Universe showrunners. At the time of making this video, the Marvel news making the rounds is that neither the X-Men nor the Fantastic Four, both of which Marvel has recently regained from Fox, will appear in the MCU anytime soon. Oh, they have the legal right to start filming an Avengers and Fantastic Four take on the X-Men movie tomorrow if that's what they wanted. But that is not what they want, because their slate of movies and their overall narrative for years to come was already planned years ago. There is plenty of room for modification if needed, but the point is, there is a plan in place, and their history of making and implementing such long-term plans and larger narratives are a pretty major part of the reason why the Marvel Cinematic Universe is now the biggest entertainment franchise of all time, bar none. Under Kathleen Kennedy's watch, however, Star Wars has not been approached as a cinematic universe following the Marvel model. They might have done so in the comics, but not on film, which is what really matters. On film, Star Wars has in actuality been run the same way Warner said they were going to run the DC Cinematic Universe by having it be filmmaker-driven. And that is no way to run a cinematic universe, as DC should be ample evidence of. When Warner first announced that their DC cinematic universe was going to be filmmaker-driven, they wanted each director to have full creative control, and for all the movies to fit together into one cohesive narrative. In reality, that meant the first incarnation of the DC cinematic universe wasn't so much filmmaker-driven as it was Zack Snyder-driven. In order to maintain continuity from one movie to another, all the other directors had to curtail their creative freedom to fit the world Snyder created. DC tried to have it both ways, and it failed. Today, Snyder is out, and DC on film truly is filmmaker-driven. But because of that, there is currently no discernible overall narrative told across several movies. Like DC, Lucasfilm also tried to have it both ways, and like DC, they failed. As I mentioned in the introduction, this Abrams interview was conducted by The Fast Company, a publication devoted to good business practices. The whole interview is about the rise and continued growth of Bad Robot, so it is ironic that to many, the real takeaway here will be the perhaps inadvertent exposure of the bad business practices at Lucasfilm. And their business practices have indeed been bad. One needs only to look at the massive decline in Star Wars merchandise sales and Lucasfilm's overall contribution to Disney to see their outcome. So how could it come to this? How could Disney's acquisition of Marvel work out so well, while their acquisition of Lucasfilm leaves so much to be desired? A lot goes into it, but in my opinion, the different management of the two companies had a lot to do with it. Marvel Studios was built on the success of previously licensed movies before they started their own production in-house under the leadership of Kevin Feige. That cannot be stressed enough. Feige had proven himself already, as his management of the by then already in progress MCU was no doubt a big factor in Disney's decision to acquire Marvel. Following the acquisition, Disney wanted him to continue doing what he already was doing, only now with Disney's resources at his disposal. Star Wars and Lucasfilm, however, was acquired not on the strength of anything recent or in progress, but due to the past strength and success of the brand. Along with the package, they got Kathleen Kennedy as CEO. Kennedy has an impressive resume, seeing as she is listed as producer in so many of both Steven Spielberg's and George Lucas movies. But how active a role did she actually have in the production of those movies? I mean, did she contribute with any real input that made them better, or did she bring the coffee while Lucasfilm and Spielberg did all the work? I'm not saying the latter is the case, mind you, but unlike Feige, who already had demonstrated success with the MCU prior to being on Disney payroll, Kathleen Kennedy had never launched a Star Wars franchise before, 
or indeed anything else that wasn't spearheaded by George Lucas or Steven Spielberg. For that reason, I believe Disney should have vetted Kennedy's plans more before allowing her to proceed with them. I'm not saying they should have fired her, but all of this could have been avoided if Alan Horn and Bob Iger had vetted her vision for the Star Wars franchise and how she planned on executing it. Such a vetting would have revealed that she really didn't have a plan outside of making Star Wars more appealing to women, and thus the need to appoint another creative director to actually oversee the Star Wars franchise from early on. While Kennedy stayed on in the contractual figurehead position as head of Lucasfilm where she couldn't do any damage. Such an arrangement, I believe, would have worked out for all. If Kennedy wasn't vetted in such a manner, or she was vetted but no action was taken, then that is indeed on Alan Horn and Bob Iger. Alongside Kathleen Kennedy, they deserve their share of the blame for Star Wars' current predicament, as they allowed it to happen. That is the major takeaway from this. It is yet another reminder that when dealing with the cinematic universe, the individual director must take a back seat, and a producer must function as an uber director, as Kevin Feige, to chart out and oversee a bigger tapestry and a bigger picture. There must be a plan. A plan that is malleable enough to be modified along the way, but a plan nonetheless. On Star Wars, there was no such plan. So now it is up to J.J. Abrams to fix Episode 9, and by extension, the franchise. Ryan Johnson has already said he is okay with Abrams retconning parts of The Last Jedi, which alone indicates that Abrams, alongside Batman v Superman screenwriter Chris Terrio, must have some radical things planned. Can they fix Star Wars, or is it too late at this point? Let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments. If you like this video, then please help share it and share your opinion in the comments. Midnight's Edge aims to give the most comprehensive analysis and commentary on genre culture and entertainment. If you would like to see more of our videos, then please subscribe, hit the bell icon, and remember to indicate that you would like to be notified when new videos are uploaded. If you really like what we do, then please support us on Patreon until a better alternative comes along, or send us a direct donation through PayPal. Also check out our sister channel Midnight's Edge After Dark for live shows and other rants. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and stay tuned for more here at Midnight's Edge.